taken from there. The first thing I'm going to go through is regret. What is What does regret mean? The definition of regret is feeling sad or disappointed over something. So, you know, if you regret your decision, you may feel a bit disappointed, maybe sad about the outcome, maybe you regret you didn't do something. So that is what we're exploring in A Christmas Carol. And regret is definitely a key theme and one we can link nicely to like redemption and things like that. So other words that mean the same thing. So if I use any of these other words, um, it means the same thing. But also, this is just another way you can up level your vocabulary. Remember, we're always trying to mirror high level students. So we can do that through mirroring their high level vocabulary. So remorse, again, another word that means regret. When you feel remorse, you feel this sad, you feel disappointed in yourself. Another one is repentance. It's this extreme regret. So it's not just like normal regret or remorse. It's an extreme emotion. So that's repentance. And then penitence is extreme sorrow and regret. Again, all very similar, but the last kind of two of repentance and penitence is more of an extreme emotion. So if there are any of the key words that you can use on top of regrets, you can use it alongside regret or in a replacement of the word regret as well, so just to up level that vocabulary. I'll just give you a second to write that down, underline it, bold it, so then we've got that ready for when we're going to write the rest of it and you can kind of use those in your analysis afterwards use these keywords to really make sure you're expanding on your vocabulary okay cool right so let's go on to scrooge's lack of regret so this is the first thing we're going to explore, Scrooge's lack of regret. Think about how he's presented in stage one and how this shows his lack of regret. So remember as well, guys, when you're doing any key theme, you can always invert it. So if you're talking about regret, you can talk about someone's lack of regret. For example, say you were talking about responsibility in an inspector course, for example, you could talk about somebody's lack of responsibility. So you can always argue it the other way. As long as it's focused around the question, that's absolutely fine. So let, let's look at some key words, first of all. So some key words for Scrooge in stage one and just to show his lack of regret. Parsimonious. Now, parsimonious, love this word for Scrooge. It means he is selfish. Frugal, it means he is stingy. Misanthropic, basically it means he's disliked people. If anybody you know is quite antisocial, you can call them misanthropic, see their face, be like, what does that even mean? Um, and then apathetic means no interest in others. So we can see he's parsimonious, he's selfish, he only cares about himself, refuses to give to charity, he's frugal, stingy, again, linked quite nicely, refuses to give to others, is very uh, about himself. And then misanthropic, he dislikes people, think about he tries to keep his distance, he warns humanity of its distance to keep its distance because he wants to ostracise himself ostracized just basically means he wants to isolate himself and then apathetic means there's no interest in others he's not interested in mingling with other people socializing like a normal person within society he is happy to isolate and ostracize himself so the first quote that shows scrooge's lack of regret is are there no prisons and the union workhouses so this is, is in stave one we're going to go through the analysis on this guys we're always going to do like two bits of analysis for each quote and afterwards i'll give you a chance to ask any questions so Malthusian views. So what I mean by Malthusian views, this quote shows Malthusian views. So Thomas Malthus, this is a bit of context, was a British economist who believed that poverty was inevitable and as a result of short supplies. So what he believed was that poverty couldn't be um, stopped and that it was inevitable. So it was always going to happen because there wasn't enough supplies to go around. So his argument was there's no point trying to reduce poverty because it's always going to happen because there's not enough food and supplies to go around. There's too many people, basically. That was his logic. Dickens is very anti malthusian So you could call this an anti malthusian tale if you were going to go beyond. But anti malthusian tale, and we can see these Malthusian views, of course, Dickens is very critical of. So Scrooge here, he shows these Malthusian views and he does not feel regret or remorse for the inevitability of poverty. So just like Thomas Malthus, it's inevitable, but Scrooge has no regrets. He feels no remorse towards the inevitability of poverty and just sees it as it's going to commence anyway and he can't do much to counter it. That's a really nice idea about regret. Lack of regret towards Malthusian ideas and the inevitability of poverty. And then the next one is rhetorical question. So this is another technique we can see. Rhetorical question is a question that's not meant to be answered. So for example, if your parents ever said to you, oh, do you think that was a good idea? Da, 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 da. 
They're not actually asking you to reply, yes, I didn't think it was a good idea. It's a rhetorical question. It's meant to sit there and make you think about it. It's not meant to have an answer. So when he's kind of saying, oh, there are no prisons and the union workhouses, this is a rhetorical question. He's asking the charity men, why should I give to them? Aren't there these prisons? Aren't there the workhouses? Shouldn't they just go there? So he is questioning why he is morally inclined to give to those who willingly choose to live in poverty. Now, when I say willingly choose, of course, they haven't willingly chosen to live in poverty, but this was the upper class's mindset towards the poor. They believed it was a choice. They believed it was down to them being lazy. That was the upper class mindset towards poverty. And we can see that because he's questioning why he should be inclined to give when it's down to their own circumstances. It's their own fault. He lacks compassion and understanding towards their dehumanizing treatment. So he completely lacks any empathy, any human emotion towards this dehumanized and exploited lower classes we see in the Victorian era. Complete lack of empathy. So he has no regret about his opinion of the lower classes. This is kind of what we really see in stage one. He lacks regret. He lacks remorse. He lacks 